in the headlines. Preparations on for APC presidential primaries as President Muhammadu Buhari asks aspirants to reach consensus. President Buhari condemns our killings as Ondo state governor vows to hunt down perpetrators. FCT minister donates land for second Abuja runway. Away from Nigeria, Russian President Vladimir Putin challenges West over missile supplies to Ukraine. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. And now the details, beginning with political stories. Preparations for the 2022 All Progressives Congress APC Special National Convention to elect the party's presidential flag bearer are at an advanced stage. Trustee V. Shefiu Suleiman, who was at the Eagle Square, venue for the party's national gathering, has an update. Preparation has reached advanced stage here at the Eagle Square, venue for the APC 2022 Special Convention, uh, a convention that is expected to produce the nation's uh, ruling party's flag bearer for the 2023 presidential election. You can see behind me uh, various activities taking place, from those creating the podium and the polling booths, uh, to those laying the red carpets, and to those that are saddled the responsibility of decorating uh, the various stands, including the BIP stand, uh, where President and other key personalities uh, within the APC will be uh, seated. Uh, here is uh, one of the um, members of the organizing committee uh, who will be talking to us and sharing some of the you know, preparations ahead of the uh, convention. Um, what exactly is going to be different this time around looking at this national convention? Well, this time around it's going to be um, a convention that's well planned, obviously. Uh, it's going to be peaceful, it's going to be secure. And uh, this time around people will actually enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, we're looking to not just um, come here and elect um, the candidate for the All Progressive Congress, but also have uh, some sort of fun fair where everyone is um, happy to actually network and not to meet um, fellow party members and also also um, uh, tell Nigerians that um, the All Progressive Party is a people oriented party and a party that is um, you know looking forward to a successful convention. One thing I can assure you is the fact that um, the aspirants are ready, they are all qualified, I mean these are qualified aspirants and um, they are all ready to go for it, whether it's going to be a consensus or whether the delegates are coming here to vote or they actually come in here to affirm a, a candidate that's been agreed to. Whatever it is, you know, Nigerians actually want to see that happen and we're quite glad and we're quite um, sure that that will happen uh, without any uh, hassle at all. Okay, this is uh, from the horse's mouth. One of the members of the organizing committee uh, giving us his perspective with regards to the preparation ahead of the uh, national convention. One thing is clear. Nigerians are going to witness a top-notch party convention. Uh, but then with regards to whether we're going to have a consensus candidate or it's going to be an open contest, uh, that is left to be seen. From the Eagle Square here in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari on Saturday asked presidential aspirants of the All Progressives Congress to consult among themselves and choose a formidable candidate before the party's presidential primary on Monday. According to a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, the president gave the advice during a meeting with all the APC presidential aspirants at the State House in Abuja. The meeting is the president's second in a series of consultation with party stakeholders to ensure that the unity and cohesion of the APC are sustained and to provide direction. The president assured attendees that in the interest of the nation and the party, he will continue to provide effective leadership during the transition processes and ongoing consultation. and strategic emergence of a flag bearer who will lead the APC to a resounding victory 
in the upcoming presidential polls. Given these circumstances, I charge you to recognize the importance of the stability and unity of the party, which cannot be overemphasized. Similarly, I wish to remind you that our choice of elect bearer must be formidable, appealing to the electorate across the board and should command such ability to unify the country and the capacity to address our critical challenges. Without prejudice to your qualifications, I urge all of you to hold consultations among yourselves and with the party with a view to building a consensus in a manner that will help the party reduce the number of aspirants, bring up a formidable candidate, and scale down the anxiety of party members. Now, the FCT Police Command says it has put in place traffic diversions as the strategic places within the metropolis ahead of the APC Special Convention scheduled to commence on Monday 6th of June. A statement from the Police Public Relations Officer, Josephine Ade, says that the diversions will majorly affect areas around the convention ground. She also noted that the diversions will be characterized by heavy police presence and traffic units to ensure free flow of vehicular movement while calling for understanding from the public during the restriction period the police PRO on behalf of the commissioner Babaji Sunday advised all to be vigilant throughout the period and report any suspicious movement to the police the African Democratic Congress has conducted its governorship primary election in Gombe State ahead of the 2023 general elections. Nafiu Bala emerged ADC governorship candidate in the state on a post. Ibrahim Ismail reports. Bala emerged via an affirmative voice vote where all the delegates agreed and affirmed his candidature for the party in the 2023 Chairman ADC Primary Election Planning Committee from the party's Secretariat Abuja, Idris Musa said the affirmation mode of electing candidates is recognized by the party's constitution as well as the INEC guidelines for primaries. By the power bestowed on me, I have at this moment asked members that are present here to affirm uh, Honorable Alaji Nafiu Bala. So I now call you members to please affirm his candidature. In his acceptance speech, Bala said he has a five-point agenda that will lead to the transformation of the state. Security, health sector, agricultural, economic development tax. I have the confidence because of most of if you look going through the combustive masses, people are tight. People want Barbaran youth to be a governor. I want to thank the delegates and the leadership from the national to the world level. And most of the combustive from stakeholders encouraging me to come out and contest this election. The exercise was monitored by the independent National Electoral Commission INEC from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And now on a sad note, several worshippers were killed in an explosion which rocked St. Francis Catholic Church over Lua Street, over local government area of Ondo State. Confirming the incident, the police public relations officer in Ondo, Fumilayo Odunlami, said investigation is ongoing. As at the time of filing this report, details of the incident are sketchy. The worship center is adjacent to the parlors of the Olowo of Owo. Owo is the hometown of Governor Rotimi Akeredulu. In the meantime, President Muhammadu Buhari has condemned the heinous killing on Sunday of worshippers at the St. Francis Catholic Church in Owo, Ondo State. The statement by President's spokesman Femi Adesina quotes him saying that only fans from the nether region could have conceived and carried out such a dastardly act. The president, however, vowed that the country will never give in to evil 
and wicked people, stressing that Nigeria will eventually win. Commiserating with the families of the dead, President Buhari directed emergency agencies to swing into action and bring succor to the wounded. Governor Rotimi Akiridalu of Ondo State has assured residents of the state that the government will hunt down assailants that attacked and killed worshippers of St. Francis Catholic Church on Sunday. This is contained in a statement by Mr. Richard Olatunde, the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor on Sunday in Akure. The Governor, who expressed shock at the incident, condoled with the people of Owa, especially families of victims of the attack. Akira Dolu enjoined people to be calm and sensitive, asking them not to engage in any act that could complicate the crisis. Now, at least 120 people have been hospitalized after suspected toxic chemicals from an expired industrial gas cylinder contaminated the air and spread to the neighborhood of Mundadu in Kano. Confirming the incident, the public relations officer, Kano State Fire Service, Samin Abdullahi, said many victims were conveyed to hospitals for medical attention. He said about 70 of them were taken to Jain Primary Healthcare while 50 were taken to the Murtala Muhammad Specialist Hospital, adding that so far no life has been lost in the incident. Daily Trust reports that most of the victims were women and children. Now, several people have been feared killed and houses raised during a renewed crisis between Basa Ibura crisis in Basa local government area of Kogi state. The two ethnic groups have been at loggerheads for a long time over fish ponds and land ownership. But the intervention of Governor Yahya Bello-led administration restored relative peace in the last two years to the area. The renewed hostility was said to have erupted on Monday, May 30th, when two people believed to be Basa ethnic nationalities were allegedly killed on a farm at Uga Chere near Oguma, the headquarters of the council, and Kurumu near Udobo. Reports say that Basa people believe the killing was masterminded by Ibra Mozum because of the existing hostility between the two ethnic groups. You're watching Trust News Update coming up shortly. Intensifying war against illicit drugs. Details and more shortly. Thanks for staying. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Here's a look at the top stories again. Ahead of the APC presidential primaries, President Buhari asked aspirants to reach consensus. President Muhammadu Buhari condemns our killings as Ondo State Governor vows to hunt down perpetrators. Elsewhere, the FCT Police Command says normalcy has been restored at the scene of the Saturday incident where a 30-year-old member of a local vigilante was killed for alleged blasphemy. A statement from the command's public relations officer, Josephine Ade, says monitoring and surveillance of the area is being carried out to avoid any reprisal attack or breakdown of law and order. She urged residents to go about their lawful duties without fear or apprehension of any kind from any quarters as discreet investigation continues to unravel facts surrounding the ugly incident 
and to effect the arrest of the perpetrators. She noted that the Commissioner of Police, CP Babaji Sunday, while warning against the indiscriminate act of jungle justice, stated that adequate sanctions will be meted on subscribers of the Crude and Dastardly Act. Now, meanwhile, the FCT Minister Mohamed Bello has condemned the mob attack on citizen Ahmad Usman, which culminated in his death on June 4th over allegation of blasphemy against Prophet Muhammad. Bello, in a statement on Sunday in Abuja by his Chief Press Secretary, Anthony Ogunle, reiterated that no one had the right to take the laws into their hands, no matter the circumstances or perceived level of provocation. He said that the FCT administration will not tolerate any form of mob attacks on any resident of the territory or the breakdown of law and order. The minister called on the security agencies to ensure that all those who participated in this heinous act were apprehended and prosecuted. Bello reminded residents that FCT was founded on the premise of national unity, peace and love for the country and fellow countrymen. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, says no fewer than 11 members of the trafficking syndicates have been arrested in connection with peddling of illicit drug in Abuja and Lagos. Besides the 11 suspect, a 35-year-old physically challenged lady, Kasarachi Onumajuru, uh, who hides under her condition to deal in drugs at Mbatoli local government area of Imo State, was also arrested. The report. First on the list of those arrested in connection to schedules at the two airports is Ofochima Cheolobi, who had on Friday 20th May attempted to export to Dubai, UAE, 200 blocks of cannabis sativa, weighing 30.20 kilograms concealed in 40 sacks of bitter leaf through the Sako Export Shade, a cargo wing of the Murchala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos. Statement by the Director, Media and Advocacy, Femi Babafemi, saying on the same day, 10 cartons of cats with gross weight of 354.600 kg were also seized at the Nakon import shade of the airport. The statement noted that the following day, Saturday 21st May, a freight agent, Roland Orinami, was arrested by the NDLEA operatives attached to the local wing of Lagos Airport with 1.90 kg of loud, a variant of cannabis, fabric packed in some bottles while trying to send via flights to Abuja. He said a follow-up operation in Abuja led to the arrest of a taxi driver, Instic Evans, sent to collect the consignment. His confession also led to the arrest of the actual owner, Adesanya Olakunle Isaac, at his house in Life Camp area of Abuja. Adesanya, who claimed to be into information technology, accepted ownership of the seized drug, which he said was meant for an upcoming birthday party of his friends. Baba Femi also informed that on Tuesday 24th May, another freight agent, Moshud Aziz Olaide, was arrested at Narco Export Shade of MMIA when presenting a cargo containing psychotropic substances heading to Dubai. The illegal consignment, he said, was packed into other items such as car drinks, liquid beaters, and other non-controlled drugs. The seized drugs include tramadol, 225 milligrams, refnol, and MDMA. Arrests were also made in Imo, Enugu, and Abuja, with several consignments and drugs recovered. Chairman, Chief Executive of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired, commended the officers and men of the various commands of the agency for sustaining the heat on drug cartels. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Mohamed Bello, has presented 12,000 hectares with certificate of occupancy to his aviation counterpart, Senator Hadi Sarika, to execute the aviation roadmap. Bello made the presentation on Friday in Abuja when he led a team from his ministry to pay a courtesy visit on Sirika in his office. FCT Minister affirmed that the projects will benefit many as jobs will be created. Responding, Sirika thanked the FCT minister and his entire team 
and assured that the land will be used according to the design in the documents presented to the Aviation Ministry. According to him, the land will be used to construct a secondary runway, MRO facility, aviation leasing company, a training center, and building of cargo terminal, among others. Now on business, the Debt Management Office, DMO, has listed two new federal government of Nigeria FGN savings bonds for subscription at 1,000 Naira per unit. According to the DMO, the first one is a two-year savings bond maturing on June 15, 2024 at an interest rate of 8.20% per annum and the second is a three-year savings bond due for maturing on June 15, 2025 at 9.20% per annum interest rate. It added that the FGN bonds qualify as shorties in as securities in which trustees could invest under the Trustee Investment Act. The savings bonds are listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and qualify as liquid assets for liquidity ratio calculation in banks. Now away from Nigeria, President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, President Vladimir Putin rather, has warned the West that Russia will strike new targets if the U.S. starts supplying Ukraine with longer-range missiles. This comes as at least one person is reported wounded as powerful explosions rock Kyiv after weeks of uh, calm. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says that one of the country's holiest Orthodox Christian sites has been burnt down following a Russian attack. He says street fighting is continuing in the city where the situation remains extremely difficult. Now on a lighter note, let's take a look at how China tourism gets a boost despite the impact of COVID-19. Despite the impact of the COVID-19, China's consumption has seen a boost during the five-day Labor Day holiday. To encourage holiday consumption such as tourism within provinces amid the pandemic, local governments have come up with different preferential policies including discounted or free tickets for scenic spots. Some popular tourist destinations and resorts have seen a peak in tourist arrivals. <音>我一直现在都在春秋天接待了游客量比较多然后呢昨天应该有一千多人今天目测的话也有两千多人在这个场地里面游玩主要是以搭帐篷啊露营休闲为主五一节就是来放松的嘛就是工作也对啊整个